This is an educational guide to cardiac risk factors. On admission to our ward, your nurse asked you a number of questions to assess your cardiac risk factors. These were, do you smoke? Do you have high cholesterol? Do you have diabetes? What is your height and weight so we can assess your body mass index? Do you have a, a history of depression or anxiety or do you live alone? Do you exercise and if so, how often? Do you have high blood pressure? Is there a family history of stroke, heart attack or angina? And how much alcohol do you drink? In this educational movie, we are going to explain why we asked you these questions, what cardiac risk factors are, and what you can do to improve your lifestyle and decrease your chances of having another cardiac event. To put this all into perspective, let's first look at how a heart attack happens. Heart attack, or myocardial infarction, is caused due to coronary artery blockage. Coronary arteries are the blood vessels which supply the heart with oxygen and nutrition. Over time, the inside of these arteries develop fibrofatty plaques of different sizes. These plaques are made of cholesterol and other substances floating through the bloodstream, such as inflammatory cells, proteins, and calcium. Many of the plaque deposits are hard on the outside and soft on the inside. The hard surface can crack or tear, exposing the soft, fatty inside. When this happens, platelets come to the area and blood clots form around the plaque. The artery narrows further and in turn there is less room for blood to flow through the arteries. Finally, this results in the occlusion of the coronary arteries, resulting in the death of the surrounding heart muscles. The patient experiences tightness, heaviness, or constriction in the chest. When you smoke, every puff damages cells throughout your body. The latest research shows cigarette smoke contains over 7,000 chemicals that spread through your blood vessels, causing inflammation and clotting, restricting oxygen flow, and doubling your risk of heart attack and death. Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of death of Australians and smoking is a major cause of heart disease. The underlying cause of heart attack is atherosclerosis and smoking is known to contribute to its development. Smokers have more heart attacks and angina than non-smokers and are four times more likely to die from coronary artery disease than non-smokers. Nicotine causes immediate and long-term increases in blood pressure, heart rate and blood flow. Stopping smoking is the single most important thing you can do to stop from having another heart attack and reduce your risk of developing other diseases. After one year of not smoking, your risk of heart disease is halved and after 15 years of not smoking, your heart disease risk is the same as a non-smoker. Passive smoking increases a person's risk of death by heart attack by about 25%. You should avoid secondhand smoke by not going to places where smoking is allowed and by asking friends to not smoke in the house or car. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a fat which is produced by the liver and is vital for normal body functions, such as insulating nerve fibers and maintaining cell membranes. There are a number of cholesterols which we measure. LDL or bad cholesterol, HDL or good cholesterol, and triglycerides. There are a number of factors which contribute to a high cholesterol. These are a diet high in saturated fat, lack of exercise, excess alcohol intake, and being overweight. You can control your cholesterol by making a few changes. Take the medications your doctor has prescribed for you, Eat a healthy diet with plenty of fish, fruit and vegetables. Choose lean meats and nutritious snacks. Cut out salt from your diet. Quit smoking. 
Aim for 30 minutes of physical activity each day. Reduce your weight and the size of your waist and don't drink to excess. What is the link between diabetes and cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease is a major complication of diabetes and the leading cause of early death among diabetics. Adults with diabetes are two to four times more likely to have heart, heart disease or suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. High blood glucose in adults with diabetes increases the risk for heart attack, stroke, angina and coronary artery disease. People with type 2 diabetes also have other cardiac risk factors which contributes to their risks of cardiovascular disease. Smoking doubles the risk of cardiovascular disease in people with diabetes. The treatment goals for people with diabetes is as easy as ABC. A1C is an averaged blood glucose. B for blood pressure should be less than 130 over 80. C for cholesterol should be less than 5.5. If you are overweight, you are more likely to develop forms of heart disease such as heart attack, congestive heart failure, sudden cardiac death, angina and abnormal heart rhythms. The more overweight a person is, the more likely he or she is to develop heart disease. In addition, people with more body fat have higher blood levels of substances that cause inflammation. Inflammation in blood vessels may increase the risk for heart disease. Body mass index is a calculation taken from your height and weight. A waist measurement of less than 90 cm for men and less than 80 cm for women is also recommended. Central obesity puts you at greater risk of heart disease because it leads to high blood pressure, high cholesterol and diabetes. The best way to lose weight is to do so gradually. It is recommended you get at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity most days of the week. If you want a strong and healthy heart, you need to do the right kind of exercises, and you must do them five days a week. These are exercises that get your heart beating faster and last for 30 minutes or more without stopping. Here's a list of some heart helpers that will do the trick. Jogging, biking, swimming, jump roping, hiking, cross-country skiing, dancing, rollerblade, brisk walking, or jumping on the trampoline. When you do these exercises, you want your heart to work hard, but not too hard. You need to push yourself a little, but don't overdo it. There are so many benefits to regular exercise. It can strengthen your heart and cardiovascular system, improve your circulation, lower blood pressure, improve muscle tone and strength, improve balance and joint flexibility, strengthen your bones, reduce body fat and help you to reach a healthy weight, help reduce stress, tension, anxiety and depression, boost self-image and self-esteem, improves sleep, makes you feel more relaxed and rested, makes you look fit and healthy. The Heart Foundation recommends 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity most days of the week to maintain a healthy heart.
High blood pressure does not cause problems over a day or weeks or months. High blood pressure causes problems over many years, and it can affect your entire body. Let's talk about some of the body's structures that are most affected by high blood pressure. These include your blood vessels, heart, brain, kidneys, and eyes. The small blood vessels in the vital organs are most affected over time. These vessels become scarred, hardened, and less elastic, which means that they are more likely to get blocked or rupture. This may happen as you get older, whether or not your blood pressure is too high. But high blood pressure can speed up this process. Another way that high blood pressure affects your blood vessels is that it may play a role in the development of atherosclerosis. A person has atherosclerosis if their arteries thicken because of fat and cholesterol buildup on the artery walls. High blood pressure adds strain to the blood vessel walls, which puts them in more danger of getting atherosclerosis than they would otherwise be. If the inside of your blood vessels gets smaller and harder, and the pressure inside them goes up, then your heart has to pump harder to get blood through them. Your heart is a muscle, and just like other muscles, working this hard makes your heart get bigger. This is not a good thing for your heart. It can get stretched out, and some of the blood that is supposed to pump through your body stays back in the heart. Eventually, your heart begins to weaken because it simply cannot continue to pump so hard against the pressure in your vessels. When the heart can no longer pump out all of the blood that enters its chambers, this is a serious condition called congestive heart failure. A symptom of this condition can be fluid that backs up into the lungs and chest cavity. A person that has had high blood pressure for many years is at a serious risk of heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure. In fact, if you have high blood pressure and it is left untreated, you are three times more likely to have heart disease, six times more likely to develop congestive heart failure, and seven times more likely to have a stroke. Fortunately, a person can make lifestyle changes that will help lessen the strain on their heart and blood vessels. This helps to control the bad effects high blood pressure can have on the organs. Normal blood pressure is about 120 on 70. Hypertension or high blood pressure is anything greater than 140 on 90. When blood pressure goes up, the heart has to work harder than normal, and this puts the heart and the blood vessels under a strain. If high blood pressure is not treated, the heart will have to work even harder to pump enough blood and oxygen to meet the body's needs. The heart enlarges when it is forced to work harder than normal for a long time. Blood vessels also suffer the effects of high blood pressure, and over time they become hardened, this often occurs as people age, but high blood pressure speeds the process. As well as medications, there are some other ways to control blood pressure. Quit smoking, lose weight, exercise regularly, eat a well-balanced diet, and limit alcohol intake. This brings us to the next question. Is alcohol good for the heart? Moderate alcohol intake can have certain health benefits, particularly with regard to coronary heart disease, but chronic or excessive use can lead to high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, stroke, weight gain, increased triglyceride levels, atrial fibrillation, or alcoholic cardiomyopathy, when the heart becomes enlarged and weakened. Generally, if you drink alcohol, limit your intake to no more than two standard drinks a day for men and one standard drink per day for women. If you have a family history of strokes, heart attacks or angina, it means you are more at risk of cardiovascular disease yourself. For this reason, it is important to watch the cardiac risk factors you have control over so you may live a long and healthy life.
If you up the tempo of your heartbeat for 30 minutes a day, you could reduce your chances of heart disease by half.